Have you ever wondered why elements like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, sodium and most of the elements out there just cannot exist as independent atoms in nature? They exist as molecules of compounds, but they don't exist as independent atoms. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, I've heard of hydrogen gas, I've heard of oxygen gas, are they not independent atoms of oxygen and hydrogen? Well, actually no. Oxygen gas and hydrogen gas are actually molecules of oxygen, molecules of hydrogen. This is two atoms of hydrogen forming a molecule of hydrogen gas. So that's how hydrogen gas, oxygen gas or even nitrogen gas or chlorine gas exist in nature. Okay, so our next question is going to be, why do atoms combine to form molecules? Well, that's because of stability. Now your obvious next question is going to be, okay, so how do we achieve stability? Well, if you came up to me and asked me, how do I get wealthy? My answer would most probably be, go and ask someone who's wealthy. If you came and asked me, how do I achieve physical fitness? I would say, go and ask someone who is fit. Well, I'll answer the same way with stability. I'd say, go and ask someone who's stable, right? So then you'd ask me, wait a minute, who is stable? Which atoms are stable? turns out that noble gases are stable. And so let's go and find noble gases and let's ask them their secret. So here is the list of maybe the first 20 elements and I pick out the noble gases. Okay, so that's helium, neon and argon. And I also take some more uh, noble gases, that's krypton, xenon, radon. This is almost the entire list of noble gases and I ask them a question. Why are you guys stable? And this is what they tell me. They tell me, hey, look at our electronic configuration and you'll get to know the secret. So I go ahead and list out their electronic configuration. The electronic configuration of helium is simple. They, the helium atom has a nucleus. It has two electrons around it. And that's in the first shell. And no more electrons, right? Because the atomic number of helium is basically two. So the electronic configuration is just two. Right? Okay, so what about neon? Neon has a nucleus, neon has two electrons in the first shell, it has eight electrons in the outermost shell. The total number of electrons in this case, that's 10. And so neon has an electronic configuration of two comma, great. What about argon? Argon has 18 electrons, so argon has two electrons in the innermost shell, eight in the next shell, and then eight again, in the outermost shell, right? So that basically gives us an electronic configuration of 288. What about krypton? Krypton looks like this. It has an, it has an electronic configuration of 2818 and then 8. Notice that there's a pattern that's getting formed. If we just leave out high helium for a moment, you'll notice that we have 8 electrons in the outermost shell in these three cases. Right? And if you pull out the electronic configuration of xenon and radon, you'll notice that they do have eight electrons in the outermost shell. I do know that I've skipped the other numbers and that's just to maintain simplicity. Okay, so now that we know that there's some kind of pattern going on with eight electrons being some kind of benchmark or some kind of standard for the noble gases, I know that if any atom can mimic the electronic configuration of the noble gases, it would be stable. Let me give you an example. Let's say I take the case of sodium, right? So this is what a sodium atom looks like. It has two electrons in the innermost shell, eight in the next shell, and then one electron in the outermost shell, giving it an electronic configuration of two, eight, one. Okay. And Think about it, if I'm able to achieve the electronic configuration of neon, I would be stable, right? Sodium would be stable if it had an electronic configuration of 2,8. How can you give sodium an electronic configuration of 2,8? What if I removed one electron from sodium? It would turn out to have an electronic configuration of 2,8. Right? And that's exactly like neon. And so now sodium would be stable. Interesting, isn't it? Now you might say, hey, wait a minute. Why did sodium want to become like neon? Why did it not try to become like argon? 
If it became like argon, that's a noble gas too, it would become stable, right? So why did it not try to, you know, gain seven electrons to become like argon? Interesting question, isn't it? The issue is that gaining seven electrons is harder than losing one electron. Losing one electron is a small change to the atom, whereas gaining seven electrons is a huge change to the atom. And so it's just not possible to gain seven electrons very easily. It's way easier to lose one electron, and so sodium prefers to do that. And so the argon thing really doesn't work. Okay, next let's talk about magnesium. What if magnesium was able to somehow lose those last two electrons and, you know, get the electronic configuration of 2,8, would it be stable? Yes, of course, it would be stable. Why? Because now it's achieved the electronic configuration of neon, which is 2,8, right? Okay, what about oxygen and fluorine? What's the deal with them? Think about it. If oxygen, which has an electronic configuration of 2,6, had to get neon's electronic configuration, that's 2,8, what would it need to do? Think about it. Yes, you're right. Oxygen would have to gain two electrons to get the electronic configuration of 2,8, right? What about fluorine? Fluorine, if it gained one electron, it would be able to reach the electronic configuration of 2,8, which is the electronic configuration of neon, right? So we've noticed some kind of pattern going on here right? Some elements prefer to gain a few electrons to become like a noble gas, whereas the other elements seem to want to lose electrons to become like the noble gas. So to summarize, we can say that any atom that gets an electronic configuration like a noble gas is stable. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.